I'm gonna pull this up. I want y'all to see what the what the uh, what this uh, what I'm gonna pull up with my PowerPoint. Okay. Here it is from the beginning. So, like they said, this is an annual thing that we have done for a while, which is the sex, dating, and relationships from a Christian perspective. Now, a lot of times, you know, the first time I saw this flyer, first thing I saw on it was sex. It didn't even matter what else was going on. I saw that, hey, bro, I'm hey, you hear this a program, they're talking about sex. I'm going. It don't even matter what the rest of the program says. It, it just, what matters is I'm going. And I came the first time and I enjoyed myself some 13 some years ago. And ever since that day, I've been coming to this program. And now the Lord has allowed for me to be here to talk to you guys about sex, dating, and relationships. So we all want to know, everybody here, you know, has a desire, I imagine, to be in a relationship, right? Is there anybody, not, not the, these people right here, of course, is married. Is there anybody who's already in a relationship right now? All right, okay, okay, we got some single people and they want to make it known I'm single, okay? Amen, okay, testify, okay? So, we're going to talk about things as far as relationships and knowing whether somebody is the one for you. And some things that you guys want to avoid, because we're, we're dealing with the cupping season. Um, one thing, which is, you know, it's cold outside. You know, everybody want to snuggle up with somebody. You know, it's native with that. We're going to talk about it. But everybody want to have somebody that they moved up with during this winter time when it's cold outside. And Jack Frost is nipping at your nose. You want to be able to have somebody. And one thing that you don't you want to avoid is you don't want to have this. I don't know if it is. I saw this on Facebook, but I thought it was appropriate for right now. You don't want to find yourself trying to rent a boyfriend or a girlfriend for the holidays. Because if you're tired of your family asking, you know, now, now I don't even know if this is real or not, but there might be that brother out there or that sister that you can rent them for $20 and you get the $20 package. <laughs> or you can maybe get that $50 package and they can pretend like they that one that you've been looking for all your life. But you want to avoid things like this. And something that's important is when looking at a potential mate or somebody that you are interested in, you want to make sure that when going into looking at somebody as being a potential person that you want to be in a relationship with, you want to first make sure that when you are approaching that person, that your mindset is on it being based and on the right things. Um, a lot of people find themselves, like this picture right here, with wanting to have a boyfriend or girlfriend for just a, we just talking in this season. Have y'all heard that before? Did y'all see people say, hey, look, look, I'm just trying to, hey, she just my fall and winter girlfriend. When the springtime come and the girls come out, I'm gonna have to let her know, like, oh, I don't think it's gonna work out. Uh, I think we should see other people. You don't want that type of thing. So you wanna make sure that the relationship is built on the right things. So the first thing you wanna make sure of is, you want to make sure that you both are spiritually compatible, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that y'all both, you know, being Christians. Now, you would think with this being from a Christian perspective that they would be pretty simple and pretty easy, right? Like, okay, I want to date another Christian. But it's not always the case because sometimes everybody doesn't look at it from that perspective. So the first thing is you want to make sure that when you're approaching somebody that your focus and your mindset is on it being a Christ-centered relationship. A relationship that you're thinking in your mind, this person right here, for what I know, is a Christian, and I can see myself being with this person. But how do I go about it? How do I approach this type of relationship? Because there's all different type of ways the world will give you on how you should approach a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all that seem think like a man, Y'all didn't see some other movies out here that will give you some examples about how to approach a Christ-centered relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to go to our lovely guest here, 
who will be able to give you guys some insight on how they approach their Christ-centered relationship. But I'm going to give you guys one of my Christ-centered relationships that I approached some years ago when many of you guys were in second and third grade, playing with little toys and clay, and you were not thinking about school, you would think about hitting that boy or girl. Years ago, when I was an RA on this campus, I was working really hard, and our boss had got fired. And so they decided to hire a new boss, and they asked me as an RA to sit in on this meeting. And I said, sure, I'll sit in on this meeting. And this young woman walked into the room, and she sat down. And when she sat down, it was like I saw like a light from heaven shining <laughs> on this when she glistened in the room. And I said, man, this must be my body up in here. This was 13 years ago, y'all. I'm sitting here like, yeah, yeah, tell, tell us more, tell us more. And so we ended up hiring her. She was about four or five, I see, yes, she's hired. So four or five, she was four or five years older than me. And I got to know her, found out that she was a Christian, we believed some of the same things, and I said, okay. Now, mind you, y'all, I hadn't fully gave my life to the Lord, but I was a Christian, I loved the Lord, I went to church. I said, I need to come up with a way to be able to approach this one right. I'm getting ready to get my $3,000 refund from UC. So what I'm going to do, and now this is on a road to salvation, y'all. I wasn't all the way there yet. I said, I'm going to go ahead and cook some dinner. Women, everybody love to eat. Woman like a man that can cook. Cooked up some food, put it in a picnic basket, set up the candles in my room on the floor, a little blanket. Turned on a little Gerald LeVert made to love me. Said, look, I'm going to invite her to my room. She came up with the high heels on. I said, look, I just want to let you know. I've been with you for a while. And I know that uh, there's an age gap between us. That doesn't mean nothing. I just want to let you know that I've been feeling you. I want, I want us to heal something. What's up? You know what I mean? And then we got to talking from there. But some things happened to where it ultimately did not work out because her mindset wasn't where it needed to be. And my mindset on the road to salvation wasn't where it needed to be. And I'll talk about that as we go on. But the Lord had to teach me early on that the importance of having a Christ-centered relationship, when your mind is somewhere where it doesn't need to be, it can lead you somewhere where you don't want to go. And it can bring heartache that you don't want to have. So the importance of being spiritually compatible is so important. And so our lovely guests who are here who are married and been married for a while will be able to give us, us an example of what it is to enter into a Christ-centered relationship. How they knew that this was the right one for them. Y'all might hear some silly stuff. Get ready. I don't know. But we're going to have the Chandlers go first to talk about how they knew that they was the one, so y'all tune on in. I hope y'all record this. So, I'll turn it over to the channel. So, um, hi, before um, I, I dated Emmanuel, I, I wasn't really in a relationship with this guy, but we were getting to know each other. And he was a Christian. And um, do you guys know this scripture about being equally yoked? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, we, I thought we were equally yoked, um, but essentially, I think it's, you shared, you touched on this, it's a difference between being um, a Christian and having the same standards and values. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a difference there, because I'm like, Christians have sex all the time. I know you guys are shocked by that. <laughs>
but what we talked about died. It just like there was no type of depth there. So I, the extent of my conversation with him about God was um, like, what did you learn? What is God teaching you? And like he could answer that question. Like, um, what's your favorite Bible verse? Or what, like, what does this verse mean to you? What's God teaching you right now? And he just, it was like crickets. And so the Lord used that to show me that he was a great guy. Like, he treated me well, you know. Um, he had similar values that I had um, as far as dating was concerned, but when it came to talking about God, um, we, we did not, we couldn't engage on that level. And so um, that's really, that was important to me, and in this subject matter, that really is an important thing because, you know, when you're Christians, you hopefully you're dating to get married, and not dating just to date, and so it's hard to be married to someone that you can't talk about God when God should be your foundation. So. Yeah. And so I guess how we met or the question was how we knew each other was the one. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get into it. I didn't approach it. I didn't get into 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 it. I didn't I saw her, I met her in college, saw her, uh, she was actually, I was a sophomore at the time, but she was a prospective student. Saw her coming to the cafeteria, and I went, who, who is that? There was another student that was, um, that we, that, that we, that was a classmate of mine, <laughs> on the table, I met her, and then from there, didn't know for sure if she was coming to Furman or not when we went to college. Um, and so what started the relationship is really, for me, was a friendship. So. I went to, like at our college, we went, we had a, a dance that the freshman went to, so he was a freshman and I was a junior at that time. So I figured out a way to take the freshman to her freshman dance because we had a mutual friend. That, yes. <laughs> I had a mutual, we had a mutual friend that knew her and I was like, yo, this is, so the dance was called my tie. And so the girl had to get the guy's tie, whoever got the tie. Same you went to the same time. Yeah, yeah, so something like that. So basically I asked my, <laughs> classmate to ask her roommate to take my tie and give it to me, basically. <laughs> and so that's how, literally, that's how we met, and that's how uh, we started our friendship. I was initially really interested, I wasn't trying to establish a friendship, I was like, I want to date you. I've been here for two years. I've been here for two years, I know the girls, I know the girls that are here, like, I want to date you. Um, and she was like, no, I'm not interested in dating you. And she really, what I found actually about her was that she told me I want to focus on my relationship with God. Initially, I was like, oh, that's a cop-out. <laughs> like, uh, because that's, at that point in my life, that's where I was. I wanted to date her so badly. I was like, that's a cop-out. And so when I mentioned that, like, my desire to date her was greater than my desire to seek after God. And so I, I wholly, wholeheartedly believe that was God saying, stop at that time. So then we started the friendship. We had a friendship. We stayed friends. For a while, um, for, 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 our, for our entire college uh, career, my senior year is when she vocalized her interest. We started talking. I had graduated. She graduated. I graduated. She was still there. Uh, I went to med school. We were still friends. And not to make the story too long, in college we were talking, and we were just friends, and it wasn't really going anywhere. So I prayed about it to, to God again. Um, this, and I hope some people who were here last year, you've heard this part of the story, is that I was at my desk in the library studying for the medical test I was studying for at that point, and a picture of us came up, and I heard this, like I audibly heard the voice of God. So I've heard God's voice, but this time I heard like, it sounded like a voice that like audibly spoke to me that said, um, not now.
you have to be before you can take anyone and try to marry anyone, you need to be holy yourself. And so I had to get to a point where I was holy and celibate in God, and I was seeking after God more than I was seeking after the one that God had or the relationship with God. And so that's what I started to do. Um, and I grew, grew in our relationship with God, and then when it was time in the end, um, he brought it back up, but it was like years. Uh, we had been not, we had been friends at that point still going on, but we were just talking off and on, that kind of stuff. So it was about, probably about two years after he said, not now, that we, I pursued a relationship with her. On how I approached her is that we already had a relationship, we were already friends. So I literally, he writes an email. I literally wrote an email. It was kind of like, but I wrote an email. She, 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 she didn't think it was sweet. She thought like, <laughs> I grew up 
grew up in the church. Um, but when it came to getting into college, I wish I had known something like this in college because I was just doing my thing in school. And about before it was time to graduate, you know, I, I started to focus. I was like, okay, God, you know, you know, I heard him calling me more and saying, okay, it's, it's time for you to spend some time with me. And so we actually met, we, we had had similar circles of friends, and I had seen them before, but we had never, like, talked, like, to each other. And so we met actually at Matt Frog, like, officially. And, um, I was present 
at the club and I really wasn't available at the club. I was, I was completely, I was at the bar, really. I, I wasn't there, I was just with, I don't know if anybody ever just had that moment where you know that God just start talking to you and you just don't fit in no more. You just, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. So even though, the, now, why I say that is that that's important to know why you want in relationships that you can't always judge the person based upon the culture that's environment. God got to judge the, the, the heart of the individual. And, um, and, and so, uh, because, you know, I think about it like, you know, that this, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm long-winded, so I try to keep it real short. Uh, Caleb and Joshua, they were spies. And uh, Moses had sent these spies to the promised land, right? So he was going to go look at what God had promised them. It was other spies that went to go look at the same land that God had promised them. But they came back with a negative report, right? They came with a report like, it's giants, it's problems. Why are you going to go to your promise and there's problems there? And Joshua said, but I believe God. You know, and so and so, what I'm saying that is, is that you can't always just hear what the reports of others. Always seek the counsel of God, right? Always seek what God is saying. And what is God's counsel is the word of God. So a Christ-centered relationship has to be focused on the word of God, not what we feel and what we think. And so, um, being that being said, I was, I was ready um, at that moment in that frog. And I felt like, I mean, a veil was lifted off my face. Like, I, I seen her more as a, a wife. Like, I seen her as a different, a different look. Like, I just seen her. And so, we began a relationship. And it, I can't say it was all, all good in the beginning. It was terrible. <laughs> 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 it was terrible. Hey, I, I, and I, we started to play so many games with each other. You know, you guys, you know, had a different focus. He started, my friends knew, knew his friends, dated some of them. And it was kind of like, okay, Morgan, date them and just play with them. And then that's what this you know, because they and his friends were known to be dogs, you know. So that's what my friends <laughs> Then the last one is available. The difference between a person that's present and available 
I can have an air freshener bottle, and it could be the, the best smelling air freshener bottle it could possibly be. But if there's nothing in it, I don't care how many times I squeeze the bottle, it will never work. It will never be able to give out something that it does not have within. That's the difference between about being available. When you're looking for a person, you want to look for a person that's available, that has something within them. And then what's within them, it needs to be Christ. Because everything else is dumb. That was good. spiritually compatible is so important and especially being able to have somebody who you can pray with mm -hmm. and guys let's keep it real all of us got a plan when we approaching a woman you better have a plan when you approaching a woman and we see uh both of them had a plan and because you want to be spiritually compatible with somebody at the same token you want to have the right approach when you're coming towards somebody and prayer is so critical. I'll put that scripture up in Genesis 24 because it's a perfect illustration about an individual who, when he was set out to go find a mate for somebody, he said he started to pray first. Amen. A lot of people don't do that. Amen. They don't, you know, you're looking for the right woman, the right man. The enemy can send you somebody. He can, like I said, he can send you, you know, the Brad Pitt, Morris Chestnut all in one. With a smile that can stop five o'clock traffic, or Kim Kardashian, you know, Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez all in one. And she just say, I love God. And you like, hallelujah. I found out God in one. And she don't love God, she can love a different type of God. That's not what you looking for. So you want it to be where you are, you have that spiritual connection with the Lord, and you'll spend time. The second thing that's important with not just being uh, spiritually compatible, being physically compatible, we're gonna keep it real. Mm -hmm. It's the initial thing that attracted you to the person in the first place. A lot of times, people don't like to just keep it real. Let's keep it real. Sometimes people will jump in a relationship because they bored and they ain't doing nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna get with this dude, I'm gonna get with this girl because you know I ain't doing nothing else. So I'm just gonna jump into this relationship. But when you are thinking Christ-like, you are thinking, I'm not going to just jump in a relationship with somebody that I am really feeling. Because at the end of the day, you got to be thinking about that other person's feelings. And you got to keep those things in mind. And when you're looking for a significant other, we got to keep it real. You want to be attracted to your wife. You don't want to have the, you know, I just got saved. I gave my life to the Lord. I, I just love God. And it don't matter who he sends me. I just, I just, wanna, I just want somebody that will that'll run with me on this journey back to heaven. And a person comes along with one leg, one eye, have their hair missing. You know, they have dress like, I love the Lord. And, uh, uh uh, the Bible says God will give me the desires of my heart, and I don't desire you. You know what I mean? You have to be honest with yourself, and you have to be real. And so not only looking at being spiritually compatible, you want to make sure you are physically compatible. And you don't want to be that type of person that everybody knows about you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a comedian talked about with the three credit bureaus. You got three credit bureaus. There are some women that got you know, just three credit bureaus. Your credit score with one woman may be a 740, but with another woman, you might be at a 410. You know what I mean? You don't want to have the wrong credit score. 410 is terrible. You can't even get a MasterCard with that or, or you know, Capital One. So you want to make sure that you, uh, that you are not only uh, spiritually compatible, but that you are physically compatible and that you have made right decisions in your life in seeking after somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with, that you have approached them with the, the right type of respect. Our generation now sometimes comes at women crazy, and some women may come at guys crazy, but you want to have a Christ-type mind that you coming at this woman like, hey, I'm thinking about you, girl. I got you in mind. You want to avoid something that they mentioned here, which is, and I have five points that I'm going to hit, y'all, and then we're going to get into the question. You want to avoid having or building on a sexual relationship like they talked about. Because a lot of Christians, and there's people who I know, perfect illustration of a young woman who I was recently getting to know. She lived, you know, we met each other, we was talking. She lived a, she lived a little ways away. 
and uh, she's saved, she loved the Lord, but being spiritually compatible is so important. She can pray and things like that, and uh, she's, she attractive. I like her. I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> that everything that I believe is about my height, you know what I'm saying? You know, there, there, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I said, yeah. <laughs> She had really kind of fell away from the Lord for some time. And a lot of the relationships that she had been in, keeping it real, she, they were sexual relationships. And we live a little ways from each other. And, you know, I was going up to go, to go see her. She was like, you know, I'm used to a dude who I can call him at a moment's notice and he can come over. And we can spend time together, which is really he can spend the night. Because she's so used to being in sexual relationships hoping that it would ultimately lead to marriage. But it never did, and she went from relationship to relationship, and it caused something right here, which is something you want to avoid, which is a huge thing, which is soul ties. Now, what is a soul tie? It's a linkage in a soul realm between two people. Anytime you have sex with a person, you bond with that person. And more times than not, you, it's usually women that when you bond with somebody, I put something up here, which, you know, we have a good doctor here. Um, sex, and I looked this up, y'all, it's very interesting. Sex is an enhancing and emotional bond between them, whether they want to or not. When you have sex, it releases something called oxytocin, which is something that, uh, it's, it's like a pleasure hormone. And I'm gonna walk so I can keep the, uh, there we go, you gotta walk a little bit. It's a pleasure hormone that is released. And a lot of times, once, especially if you've been a virgin, once you have reached that high and it felt good, many a times it, you will have a craving just like an addict who just, once he gets that high, he chases after that high time and time again. And he just like, man, I gotta have that high again. So avoiding sexual relationships is so important. When you're trying to enter in or maintain a relationship, keeping it Christ-centered is so important because it will help you avoid certain type of heartbreaks. Because why, let's keep it real, y'all. We're going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. Why would I really, I'm just going to use it as society user. Why would I really want to buy the cow when I can get the milk for free? You know what I'm saying? I need to just go ahead and keep it real. I don't need to buy the cow if I can get the milk for free. Can I keep it real? There's a lot of dudes that's like, dude, I'm getting the milk for free. I'm not about to put a ring on that hand. And so you want to preserve yourself, make it to where you're worth waiting for. So entering into a relationship or maintaining it is keeping a standard and not allowing anything to get in the way of that standard. Being spiritually compatible, being able to pray together is, is huge. And being initially attracted to that person is definitely important and making sure that you don't have any soul ties. And if you do have anything soul ties, anything that may hinder you from being able to be successful in that relationship, this is where prayer is so important. People underestimate prayer. Like the enemy is real out here, y'all. He will tempt you with some stuff. Every day there's temptation walking around. And it's so important that you get things right before you get into a relationship. Are you really ready to jump into a relationship? Let's keep it real. Or are you thinking about the, the last dude that you was with? Like, this next dude gonna treat me better than the last one. I'm gonna make sure he taking me out to eat. He gonna be taking me to Olive Garden, Red Lobster. He gonna be taking, he gonna be taking me where I want it. Like, hold up, stop for a minute, wait a minute. You don't wanna be measuring this guy based on what the other guy didn't do. Because now your focus is not being spiritually compatible, keeping it Christ type and keeping it centered on him, focused on, okay, God, is this person the person I want to be with? Because you have a purpose for me while I'm on this earth. God got work for you to do, and he don't want you just with any Joe Schmo. Because if some people might get in your way. That girl who I told y'all about, I had an attitude problem. She had a serious attitude. I was looking like, man, she's fine, man. I, I'll be able to deal with her attitude. And it was people who was drunk on her, so they knew you need to leave that girl. I'm like, dude, you need to stop drinking. You worry about you stop drinking, and don't worry about me dealing with this woman. And the Lord had to let me know that $3,000 that I told y'all about. I did have that dinner for her. I'm going to let y'all know that happened. But the Lord cut that $3,000 down to $1,000. 
Then he knocked it down to 800. And he's like, well, I guess it uh, must not be the Lord's will for me to do some other things for her. But ultimately, the Lord began to show me things about this individual as we were getting to know each other, <laughs> entering into this relationship. There were things to where, even though she was at a, a, a higher place in the Lord, she was saved, and I hadn't given my life fully to the Lord. Spiritually, we were not even on the same level. We were not praying the same, and we ultimately didn't want the same things. Mm -hmm. And she had red flags that I wasn't paying attention to, that some people get into relationships, and you may be attracted to that person, but they may have an attitude, or they may have some things that you didn't look at. You just saw that he was fine, or she was fine, but you didn't see that there's some things underneath that they could be dealing with. So it's so important to make sure you're spiritually compatible, make sure you're physically compatible, and avoiding building on a sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. make, uh, and make sure you are over your ex or your ex, like I'm talking about. You don't want to pull a Taraji P in that movie. I had to mention it because the Lord brought it to my mind. Because this is how the world does it. The world does it like how she did my boy. I don't remember his name in the movie. I think it was Michael Ealy. Um, that might not be his name, light skinned dude, uh, in the movie. She went up, when she met up with Morris Chestnut, and he was in town, and she found out that he was divorced. And she met up with him, and some of y'all probably remember now, y'all probably didn't mention his name. She hit him, she was like, huh, let's meet up, and she gave him some good news first, and then after that, she was like, let me just hit you with a headline. I recently hooked up with uh, an ex-boyfriend, and uh, so what I wanna do is, you know, let's just be friends, right? So real quickly, you want to make sure that when you get into a relationship and it's Christ-centered, that you are committed in that relationship, that you're not looking to the left or the right. Because when you make a commitment, your word is your bond. Mm -hmm. Don't say that you are uh, you want to pursue this woman or this man and you look <laughs> to the left or the right for this other person because the devil will send people to distract you. Yeah. And you want to be focused because this one could be the one, but your focus could be thrown off and you could miss the blessing in waiting and trusting in the one God has sent you. So prayer is so critical. And making sure you are over people and that you are whole, like they said, before you jump into another relationship. Make sure you're whole and you're ready. Mm -hmm. Number four, I got two more. We're going to jump into the question. You want to make sure, oh, man. That you are mentally compatible. Come on, y'all. Now I can talk about something. I can I can talk about something other than Jesus. I love talking about Jesus. That's the number one thing that I love talking about, which is Jesus. But you want to be able to have a stimulated conversation. Let's keep it real. You want to be able to be on the phone like, girl, what you doing? What you doing? Hey, look, hey, listen, listen to that. I've been on the phone where I had a, a really good friend that we vibe so well. That we would be on the phone for four, five, six, seven hours. Because we vibe so well. We were able to talk about anything and everything. And we were mentally compatible. You want to make sure that even when you enter into a relationship, that it is Christ-centered. And that you, you are attracted to the person. And you want to be able to be mentally compatible with that person. Because many people forget that when you are courting somebody, maybe you are marrying a mom. That person is the, their mind is the sum total of past hurts, pains, and things like that. And that's what you are marrying. And even when you are dating or courting them, you have to keep that in mind. And communication in a relationship is so critical. They mentioned that last year. You got to keep it real. And, and they checked in. Why that's so important? People don't always want to check in. If you feel in some type of way, be a man, be a woman, and be honest in a relationship. Being mentally compatible is so critical because when you can be mentally compatible, that person can not only be, you can be spiritually compatible with that person and you love them, but that's like your best friend. It's nothing like marrying someone who not only loves the Lord, but it's like your best friend and you can tell them anything. Like, look, this is my girl. Like, she's my ride or die girl. Like, she going down, we over there in Afghanistan and we preaching the gospel. And look, look, it's a Romeo and Juliet. You about to die, I'm dying with you. You want somebody that's with you, that's got your back. Now, everybody here looking like, I don't know if I'm going to die. Well, we talking about, I'm talking about this point where you're married, not when uh, you still dating. I don't know if I'm going to die for you. I love you, pray for you. But you want to be mentally compatible with that person to where y'all flow 
together and y'all can have a conversation. Talk about things. Talk about what's your financial goals? What are your long-term goals? What are your short-term goals? You, your focus is a Christ-centered relationship. Look, this is where I want to be in five years. Let's just keep it real. If you still thinking about like, look, man, uh, my, my long-term goals is to move up. I'm just going to keep it real. Move up from um, flipping burgers and McDonald's to doing the fries. Like, man, I'm trying to move, move up. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if we, you know, you think about I'm going to buy a house in three years. I'm going to be a partner in seven years. I want to be able to have 2.5 kids and have that pink fence. And look, man, I'm just like, I'm I just want to get past the prize. Once I get past the prize, I'm going to be the assistant. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that. Being, I'm going to be the assistant manager. You know what I mean? But you want to be able to have, to be mentally compatible to know where you both are going. You want to make sure you both are going down the same road. Because if you're not going down the same road, you may need to get off at the next exit. Because if you don't, you can run into something down the road, an unforeseen heartbreak that you don't want to deal with. So making sure, uh, and I put up there Amos 3 and 3, which can two walk together lest they agree. In order to walk together, y'all have to, you, you, you have to be in agreement. That's being spiritually compatible. Y'all got to relate. And you want to be mentally compatible at, at the end of the day. That's so important. And something else, y'all, right here. This next one right here, which is so critical. Mm -hmm. There has to be trust and commitment mm -hmm. when you're looking at being mentally compatible with somebody. you got to have that trust or that commitment, being committed to that individual. And let's keep it real. Can you love that person in the good and the bad? When they get on your last nerves, when they get on your last nerves, y'all had the uh, first Corinthians up there, 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love and your love keeps no record of wrongs. We keep records of wrongs when people get into relations. You may make some mistakes and mess up, but if you're committed to the cause of marriage, and that's, uh, that's going to endure is not something that's a sprint. It is a marathon. <laughs> and when you get into a relationship or you want to maintain one, you got to be willing to be in it for the long haul. You're going to have some ups and some downs. You're going to have some times that you may hate her and she hates you. Hopefully you're not pulling a Mr. and Mrs. Smith where y'all are about to kill each other and then y'all make up after that. You don't want that. But you want to be able to be committed to that person. That you love that person. That when you make a commitment that I join this relationship because I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I can see myself with nobody else but you. Mm -hmm. You want to have that type of uh, desire. And I put up here also, let's keep it real, you want to date in an open and not in closed quarters. Let's just keep it real. Some people underestimate themselves. And you don't want to underestimate yourself. You don't want to put your sister or brother in a compromising position. I got one more thing I'm going to mention that we're going to be done to go to questions. You don't want to put them in a compromising position when, uh, when, when it comes to that trust and that commitment. Because, you're, again, you're looking at marriage. You're looking at something that's longer than a booty call. A 2 a.m. booty call that you can, it can be hard because you, you you got some emotions, some, some hormones that's raging, and you may need to pray. Come on, man. Prayer, you know, it works, but you, you're going to have to pray. Because you don't want to mess up a beautiful thing that God wants to bring together. I had a friend who loved the Lord, and he wanted to see this young woman saved. And she called him one night saying, I want you to come over here and talk to me about Jesus. Because she, she liked him. She was feeling him. Everything. I want you to come over here and witness to me. Tell me about Jesus. And it was 1 o'clock at night. He said, man, I'm about to go over there and talk to her about Jesus. He went over there at 1 o'clock. I said, dude, you don't need to go over there. You don't, you don't need to do that. He said, no, man, this is an opportunity. He went over there to talk to her about Jesus. He walked up. Now, he's 6 foot 3, about 240. She about 5 foot, about a buck 20. He walked into the room. She shut the door behind him, had nothing but a roll on, and dropped the roll. And y'all know what was going to happen after that. She didn't want to talk about Jesus. 
Her mind was on something else, turning off the lights, the lights of candles. That's where her mind was, and he almost got himself caught up because he liked this girl, and he wanted to build something with her spiritually where she would get saved and they could have that relationship, but her mindset was not where his was. He wanted to have a trust or a commitment with her, and getting in an open and not closed quarters is important to where you don't tempt yourself, and you don't tempt each other. That way you preserve the relationship. And last but not least, you don't want to become a stumbling block to your brother or sister. You want to make sure that you keep it pure before God. You don't want to be seductive because guys know how to turn it on, turn it off. Good. Women know it. Y'all know how to turn it on and turn it off. Y'all know how to dress or how to do some things and get a guy going. It don't take much to get a guy going. <laughs> So they're going to keep it real in here. So when you're thinking about uh, entering in or you're in a relationship, you don't want to tempt the other one while, while you're pursuing that thing of marriage. Because, again, you want to keep it pure before God, right? So each and every one, has everybody filled out their note cards? <laughs> hey, you got again? <laughs> hey, Dr. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, God feeling good like that. Sometimes people be ner uh, nervous. So what, what we want to do now is that if you haven't filled out the note cards, if you feel comfortable and you have questions about things, um, and